took my seat at the bridge desk and logged the temperature, minus 56.8 Celsius, and the wind speed, 99.5 kilometers per hour. There was enough light to see for miles, but the blizzard obscured everything. Most of the job was observation, movement scans, radar, and thermal binoculars. It was madness to mount an attack through this. It was cold enough to freeze engines. Even if the engines remained functional, there was deep chasms and sinking snow. The only way to cross was by foot or by air. The wind grounded the choppers, and no amount of insulation could protect you from the cold. The wind never ceased. It cut across the land like a scythe. Anything caught by the blade fell to sleep, and never woke again, buried under ice and snow. I sat and watched the snow. The sun didn't last. In the time it took to make a cup of coffee, the night took the light. The nights were long. I slapped my thighs. I drummed the rhythm of my fingers. I had sat in the same chair for twelve months. Each hour over the twelfth month ate at my soul. The frozen wind, the emptiness of the ice was menacing. I looked at it and felt the hopelessness spread through me. I had felt that before, but never as strong. What if they couldn't relieve us? What if the winter ran through into winter? I would die here, in the ice, without a friend. My last days spent in silence, with him grinning as I faded from life. He would find my death amusing, even if he shared the same fate. I wanted to see a smile, a genuine smile, a smile that held within it love and joy, not his sneering, hateful grin. I couldn't bear it if he was the last person I saw before the end. The floodlights came on. Something triggered the sensor. In the bright glare I saw a figure. It stood clad in black. I couldn't see its face. Nothing could survive out there. Nothing with a heart. As fast as it came it disappeared. The floodlights went off. What was it? A knock at the door broke me out of my fear. What do you want? I said. This was the first time he had made an effort to communicate since he nodded to open the supplies. What? Why were you done with the rations? I split them 50-50. You've been eating double. I left half in the crate. The other half are in my cabin. You didn't consult me. You didn't consult me when you started stuffing your face three times. Three times your daily allocation. I want to see what you've got in your room, Marky boy. Don't tell me what to do. You have half. If you don't like it, radio control and complain. At the rate you were eating, we'd have run out in a week. I don't think you realise the danger we're in. This ain't the first time I've been caught in the 13th month. And it won't be the last. They don't pay us over time. What? You didn't read your contract. The pay is fixed. Twelve months pay. Overtime is unpaid. Even if that's true, we still need to go easy on supplies. Why? Because we don't know how long we'll be stranded. The radio works, don't it? Of course it does. If we run low, 
we will radio for a drone drop. But what if the drones don't make it? What if the drones don't make it? said Hadley, mimicking my voice. Don't talk like that, you'll jinx us. I see you left the Valium in the crate. Maybe you should take some. You don't look so good. I'm fine, I said. Hadley slunk back to his cabin. The cold woke me from my sleep. I shivered in my bunk. Before I could get up, I heard his nasal voice. Get up, get up, get out of bed, you fucking idiot. You know the rules. Don't open the door unless your watch mate is present, said Hadley. I didn't open the door. Who did then? If you're trying to piss me off, you have succeeded. I didn't open the door, I said again. Who the fuck did? The ghost of Barty Foxton? I saw something last night. Save your visions for later. Help me dig the snow off the door. I put my thermal suit on and grabbed a shovel. It took us three hours to dig the door free. When we finished, I was drained. The temperature inside the station was sub-zero. I made a round of black coffee and we sat with our backs to the gas fire. The silence was about to resume. I broke it before he went back to his cabin. I saw a figure outside the window last night. It tripped the lights. Nothing could survive that wind. I'm telling you, I saw something. Well, why didn't you call it into base? I don't know. It vanished as quick as it came. What you saw was a hallucination, a trick of the dark. You didn't call it in because deep down you know that's what it was. How do you explain the lights and the door, I said. You're trying to fuck with me. You opened the door and you made up the figure to scare me. Well, it ain't going to work. I'm going to bed. If you open the door again, I'll shut you out there and say you went mad like Barty Foxton. Are you threatening me? Hadley looked into my eyes. He held the stare. He tried to make me look away, but I held his gaze. He spat on the floor and walked away. I shook with tension, the tension you get before a fight. I had to hold my ground. For all I knew, he was the one who opened the door. That night, I lay listening to the wind. It used to lull me to sleep, but now it kept me awake. It was just wind before. Empty, lifeless wind. After the lights were tripped, the wind no longer felt empty. I had an unshakable sense that something was out there. Something that could survive the cold. I thought about Barty Foxton. I saw his blue corpse laying in the ice. His eyes opened. I got up and went to the supplies. I found the Valium and popped a couple. I needed sleep. Even if my vision was just a vision, I needed to keep my strength. Hadley's eyes told me he was close to making good on his threats.